So let's talk about the fame script. Sometimes we need to just select a small region for repair or enhancement. And I want you to notice that if I, if I really boost the color here, this is kind of purple up here. You see that purple patch? I'd like to make it more like the rest of the image. Don't worry about the orange color. We'll deal with that separately in a moment in a different demonstration. But I'd really like to do something about that purple patch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the fame script. I'll execute it in the global context because it's a script. And that's going to bring up this window. And the the fame script is the freehand mask editor, and it is that lasso tool that you had in Photoshop. And you know, I meant to do something before I opened this. I want to apply that curve that I just had so that we can see the purple. Um, so there's there it is. So now it's really easy to see that purple. So now I'm going to go into my fame script. And we can really see the purple over here now. There's instructions in the left top box. You can use a brush, a spray can, ellipse, or a rectangle. But what the magic is with this tool really is the freehand shape tool. And I'm going to just hold the shift key and start drawing my freehand shape. And release. Now I'm going to set a blur amount. Usually around 50 to 75 is pretty good. You have all these choices. You can make a, a mask that's just binary, black and white. You can make a lightness mask, which is based on the brightness values. Doesn't work on linear images. You can make a prominence mask that's based on how much color saturation. But this all has this whole image has a ton of color saturation because uh, I saturated it so we could see the defects. Or you could make it, make it uh, just pick the red or the blue or the green. I just want a binary mask. So when you're ready, you can set execute, and there's the mask. It might not look like it's blurred. It never does. But when you put the mask in place, you'll see that it is blurred. And now I can change that purple to something else. Let's select. First of all, I've actually got to I've got to undo. Remember, I put that big color saturation on. I have to undo that because we don't we don't want to screw that up. Put the mask back in place. And let's get a real-time preview. Remember where the mask is. I'm just going to show you by pulling down the red where the mask is. Okay, you can see what I masked. So now let's reset it and see if we can adjust the, the blue a little bit. So I'm going to go in here and measure how blue it is. You see the line that's appearing. There's a line that's appearing in the tool. So that's kind of where I want to pull it down a little bit. And you see how it turned green there. I have to bring the curves back up, both above and below, and then make it so that it's just not visible. And I can add more saturation so I can see better. That's made that really red. Let's reset it. Let's get the blue again. And you might have to 
mess with more than one color channel. There we go. So I have to take the red and the blue down a little bit. Now I can release the saturation. I didn't really want to change that. And that's how you can use that type of a mask. Also very useful for dealing with uh, defects due to uneven field illumination that's left over after flat correction. 